Okay, thank you very much uh, for the introduction. So today I'm going to talk about a package called WCS Axis, uh, and it's a very cryptic name. Uh, but the, the main aim of the package is to plot astronomy data, uh, and also uh, recently I found that you can actually use it to plot geospatial data, um, and I'll talk about that too. So I'm working at the Max Planck Institute for Astronomy, uh, and I'm also one of the coordinators on the AstroPi project. Now the work uh, for this package was done as part of the AstroPi project. We have a number of different packages for astronomy. Um, and this is one of the new ones. Uh, so I'm the lead developer on it, but a number of people have also contributed either by code or by helping design the package in the first place. Um, and in particular, Azra Nizami is my uh, Google Summer of Code student, and she's been making great progress uh, this summer in implementing some of the functionality that you'll see today. So the main aim of WCS Axis is to provide a way to plot image data uh, and to seamlessly overlay arbitrary world coordinate systems. Okay, and world coordinate system is what stands is basically WCS. That's what we use for the acronym. Um, and we want to take into account any kind of projection and distortion in the coordinate system. So uh, I'm sure that this plot is going to be shown uh, several times at this conference because of the geospatial track, uh, and it's a Python talk, so I have to have some kind of XKCD comic. Um, but so basically, this actually illustrates very nicely uh, that, uh, for example, when you deal with geospatial data, uh, of course, the Earth is basically more or less a sphere. Okay, we can argue about that. Uh, but it's basically uh, it's some kind of spherical surface uh, that you want to project onto uh, an image uh, in the 2D plane. Um, and so, in fact, in astronomy, we have the same problem because even though things aren't technically on a sphere, um, then basically we observe them as if they were on a sphere and we represent them with longitudes and latitudes and the same kind of uh, coordinate systems that you would use on Earth. So when you have an image, uh, the gray uh, grid in the background here illustrates basically just what you would have if you took an image with some detector, uh, some CCD uh, camera, um, and so you were looking at some part of the sky, or if you're a satellite looking at Earth, you have your image on a nice 2D grid. Of course, the uh, world coordinate system, uh, which could be, for example, longitude, latitude, uh, is not going to be aligned necessarily with your pixel grid. Even if it was roughly aligned, it still has distortions that are, you know, spherical distortions, uh, any other distortions due to instruments. So in astronomy, what we do is uh, we have a standard called WCS, which uh, basically uh, essentially tells us how we can represent mappings from uh, pixel coordinates to world coordinates. And so the way we do it is we choose a reference point in the image, or it can actually be outside the image, but it should be in pixel coordinates. So it's one of the pixels, uh, and at that pixel uh, position, uh, we define what the world coordinates should be. Okay, and then and in addition to that, we then define, so that's at the anchor point, and then from there, we can define whatever projection we want. So the way we represent that, just to give a little, back, a little bit of background uh, to this, is we basically have uh, essentially metadata headers, uh, which contain information about, uh, so I can see if this works. So yeah, you have information about essentially the reference pixel up here, so that's the pixel positions at which you're defining your reference point. Uh, world coordinates, in this case, both zero. Uh, this is the increment, you know, the resolution essentially in world coordinates in, in, as a function uh, in, in uh, degrees per pixel, um, and then uh, this is the important stuff, so this contains both information about the projection, uh, which in this case is the CAR, which is a plat carré projection, um, and we actually have many of the same projections for astronomy than uh, exist for uh, essentially the Earth. Um, and then this Gilon Gilat tells us which coordinate system we're using. So to distinguish between coordinate systems and, and uh, projections uh, in astronomy, so this is just a nice example. Uh, this is an ATOF projection, and on this I'm going to show three different coordinate systems that we can uh, often use in astronomy. And it really depends what you're doing in terms of uh, the science, what, if, if you're looking at things in the solar system, in our galaxy, or even further away, which coordinate sim systems you will use. Uh, so for example, uh, the, this is an image in the infrared, in the far infrared, uh, and the bright plane through the middle is the uh, galactic plane. So uh, when we see our, we are inside a galaxy, uh, that's basically pretty much a plane, uh, and we're inside the galaxy so that when we look around at the sky, then we see a nice, essentially, uh, the Milky Way, which is around a great circle. Um, and so we can use that as our kind of zero latitude uh, for the coordinate system, and that's called galactic coordinates. Um, we can also use, there's another uh, feature in this, uh, in this plot here, so the, the kind of light blue here, uh, let's see, yes, down the middle there, um, that's basically dust from our own solar system, okay, and our solar system is not aligned with the galaxy, uh, it's around another great circle, it looks distorted in here because of the projection, uh, but it's basically, it's also a great circle uh, on the sky, and so we can also use that as a zero latitude. 
actually one of the most common coordinate systems uh, doesn't have any features on the sky that really match, and it's actually just using our own essentially Earth-based coordinate system and projecting it onto the sky uh, so that the uh, Earth equator corresponds to what we call the celestial equator, um, and we can also use that as our coordinate system. So this is just to show that we actually, you know, for the Earth, we usually think for people who are not uh, Earth scientists, we think of, well, there's longitude and latitude, and there are other coordinate systems. But really, that's the main one, and it kind of makes sense. Um, but when we look at uh, astronomy images, it really depends what science you're doing, which coordinate system you use. Now, the problem that we try to solve here to plot these images with coordinate systems is not something that's new, and there are other packages that do it. So in astronomy, there, there's two main packages that I know of. Uh, one is because I co-developed it, so that's why I know about it, called Apple Pie. Um, and then another one called PyWCS Grid 2. Now, these packages, you know, they do fine for, for a lot of kind of standard images. Um, they're not, uh, they're, it's very hard to kind of go beyond and, and do things that are a little bit more customized. And so we actually got together uh, with the developers of uh, PyWCS Grid 2 uh, and a few other people. And as part of AstroPy, we try to come up with uh, a kind of ideal package, essentially, that would allow us to do this. Uh, and hopefully, in the long term, we'll either replace this or at least provide the kind of core infrastructure that can be used by both packages. I should also mention uh, there's the Carter Pi project for uh, geospatial data, uh, and that's uh, solving the problem a little bit differently. Uh, and there's a talk later this afternoon about this. So I encourage you to go see that too. Okay, so the basic design of uh, this WCS axis package uh, is uh, to try and basically decouple the concept of coordinates from the concept of axes. Okay, and this is a big problem uh, with a lot of plotting, plotting packages by default. Uh, by default, what you get is something like on the left. You have some kind of rectangular frame, uh, and then on each axis you have uh, only one coordinate per axis. So the x-axis has the x-coordinate on it, and the y-axis has the y-coordinate on it. Okay, the axis at the top here has also the x, and the one on the right has the y coordinate. So I've indicated these with uh, slightly different colors, which are maybe not uh, very easy to see there. Um, but the idea is on each axis, you only have one coordinate. It's fine for most plots, you know, that kind of just, you know, scatter plots and any histograms, things like that. Uh, but what we want to do is, if we have uh, an image and the coordinate system is rotated compared to the image, then the coordinate system uh, will then no longer follow this nice kind of rule of having one coordinate per axis. In fact, uh, if you look on the right here, I've rotated it uh, by about 30 degrees to the right, um, and uh, now the x coordinate, uh, the, t the red ticks, uh, which are essentially, sorry, the red ticks are measuring the y coordinate, uh, and those appear on all of the edges of the frame. And the same goes for uh, the x coordinate, which is shown in black. So, uh, so basically, the, the problem is that uh, it's actually, it becomes much more complicated to plot this kind of thing. Uh, but the, that's the basic idea is we want to uh, essentially decouple the idea that one coordinate matches one axis. Uh, at the same time, we want to maintain an API that's as close as possible to Matplotlib uh, so that people who are familiar with Matplotlib can easily use this package. Now, of course, there's, you, know, you can't do uh, both completely because the Matplotlib API by default doesn't necessarily support the kind of things we want to do. So we have to pick things that are Matplotlib-like rather than things that are exactly uh, implemented in Matplotlib. And the last uh, point is that we want to basically not, we don't want to have to mo modify how the image is shown. We want to, don't want to distort the image. We want to show the image as it is and then just overlay the coordinate lines on top of that. So in practice, how do we actually do this? Uh, because it's actually not, uh, so it's actually not trivial to do with uh, basic matplotlib. So, uh, you know, by default, the x-axis has the x-coordinates on it. Uh, the y-axis has the y-coordinates. It's only possible to assign, if you assign a tick locator to the x-axis at the bottom, you have to have the same one for the top by default. Uh, there are ways that you can get around this, uh, but then every time you uh, essentially try to do, so you can have multiple axes that are on top of each other that are taking care of the different ticks, uh, but then you have the issue that it's hard to rotate ticks, and so it turns out that the easiest solution is actually uh, to have a new axis class which inherits all the methods from the normal uh, Matplotlib axis class, but re-implements all of the drawing of the objects in the plot by, uh, from scratch, or at least for, for the frame and the labels. Uh, and I should say that this is actually something that does exist in the map. Yeah. Can you look through what you mean by the AXIS versus AXES? Uh, yes. Uh, so no, no, I think in, 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 yeah. Can you repeat the question? Yes. Uh, sorry, the question was it was 
whether it inherits from axes or axes. Uh, I need to check. I think it's. I, I'll check after. Yeah, I, I always get confused between the two. But okay. yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll check. Um, so basically, the um, this has been implemented in the uh, Maplolib Toolkit Axis Artist. So it goes part of the way of, of allowing you to basically draw from scratch all the elements from the, the axis. Uh, but there's still uh, issues basically with, um, it, it still doesn't go the full way for what we want with having multiple coordinates per axis uh, and making it easy to set the settings for these. Okay, so uh, our solution is, bit, for now, we re-implement from scratch, and hopefully maybe we can actually use some of this code and put it back into the Maplolib toolkits or Maplolib itself. Okay, so uh, just to show a simple example of what this looks like, um, you basically, uh, we start off with just a few imports, so we're importing Maplotlib. Uh, we use AstroPy for dealing with, you know, reading the astronomy files and setting up the projection uh, from pixel to world coordinates. Uh, and then we import this, this WCS axis class uh, from uh, the package. So we read in the data, uh, we basically set up the transformation, uh, and then basically this is just, it looks very much like standard Maplolib, we're just initializing the figure here, setting up the, uh, the WCS axis instance. This is the same as what you would do if you, if you were using the object-oriented approach for the Maplolib uh, plots, not PyPlot. Uh, there will be ways to plug, you know, use this from PyPlot in future, um, but basically, uh, you know, this, this is very similar to the normal object-oriented uh, method. The only exception is we add this WCS uh, information at the end. Um, and then you add the axis to the figure, and then you just use imshow as you would normally. And there's nothing special about the imshow uh, command here. Uh, it's just plotting the image in pixel coordinates. But then what you see on the left is that it's then plotted, it's shown the image, uh, and you have the labels and then all the ticks which are around, uh, which are rotated in the correct way. Now, we'll see it a bit more obviously in a minute because I'll show the grid lines as well. Uh, but the, before I go on, I should say that this is what it looked like uh, you know, a few weeks ago. Then I decided that there's no reason why one should have to pass just a WCS object uh, to the class, uh, and that, because that restricts it to astronomy data. So we actually mod modified it so that you could uh, now pass any Maplotlib transformation object uh, and some metadata that describes the transformation with units and the name for the coordinates and things like that. So this can actually be now be used already with uh, non-astronomy data, uh, just with generic transformation objects. Okay, so how do we actually deal with the uh, crucial problem of uh, separating out this concept of axes and coordinates? So what we have is uh, this, we have a chords uh, property or, uh, on the axis, uh, which is a used to access the coordinates and then modify things about this coordinate. So uh, for example, you can access the coordinates by index. So you can say, okay, there's two coordinates. Uh, they don't, there doesn't have to be two. You could actually have multiple, more than two coordinates per plot because now you're no longer restricted by X and Y. Uh, so you could have three different coordinates that represent positions on the plot. Um, and so you can access them by index, so 0 or 1, and then once you've accessed them, uh, then you basically call a method, so for example, setting the, you know, the tick color or the label size or things like that. You can also access things by name, so uh, for example, in this specific case, uh, the data was in equatorial coordinates in astronomy, uh, which means you can use RA and DEC uh, to access these coordinates. Um, and then one shortcut for doing the, what you did at the top here is to just essentially iterate over uh, to, to actually uh, use the kind of tuple notation to get the RA and DEC and then use these to set the methods afterwards. So the advantage of that is that if you need to do multiple things on the coordinates, it's just shorter to write. So it's just convenience. So this is an example of how you would actually then uh, set the different properties for the different coordinates. You would basically uh, say, okay, um, I have the RA and DEC, uh, and then I'm gonna set the tick label position for the RA to be the bottom and top, okay? Uh, of the frame, uh, and then you can say, okay, I'm going to set the declination to be uh, the left. So by default, of course, it will do something like you might expect. It will put uh, the, the first coordinate on the x-axis, the second coordinate on the y-axis, but you can actually change all that. Um, you can easily then say, I want to set you know, the tick label uh, to, to blue and then uh, for, for the array and then green for the declination. You can, s you can draw the coordinate, the, you can draw the coordinate grid just for that coordinate in a certain color and then for the other coordinate in a different color. Um, and then you can also set the formatter for the uh, actual uh, two coordinates. Uh, and in this case, we have this kind of shorthand notation for different angular coordinates. Uh, but in future, we also want to be able to just pass standard Maplotlib formatters. So 
using this, it means that you no longer have to ever type, you know, have the concept of x-axis and y-axis. Uh, this actually also opens up a lot of uh, possibilities, uh, like I'll talk about custom frames later on for the, uh, for the, the plots. Um, one kind of feature that we implemented that it's not, I think we'll see maybe in a future plot, is also that we try to avoid uh, overlapping labels. So when you have this kind of deconnection between the, the coordinates and the axes, uh, you have more of a risk of overlapping labels. So we deal with that automatically too. Now this grid is actually pretty simple. Uh, it just looks like some kind of Cartesian grid that's rotated. Uh, but just to show that we can deal with more complicated grids, uh, this is just examples of two projections that, uh, for example, the conic equal error projection and then polyconic projection on the right. Um, I've never used them myself. I'm not sure why I would use them, but it, they, they look kind of fancy, so they're good examples to show that the grid works. Okay, now the, the key is actually that these projections are not hard-coded in any way in WCS axis. We have no special cases for these. Uh, the only special case, I think, is the drawing of the green line uh, here. Uh, but then, apart from that, all of the kind of grid lines are just, it just automatically figures out the range of coordinates that are visible in the plot, and then it will automatically set up uh, the grid lines uh, for that. And then you can also, if you want, specify a new spacing for the grid lines, uh, but it tries to figure out everything automatically. So uh, it's actually, it's, it's really nice that you can basically, you can then pass any transformation object and there's absolutely no code to modify in it and it should hopefully do the right thing. Okay, so, um, all right. Uh, this is now just an example just to show that uh, it works nicely in interactive mode too. So you can go and take an image, plot the image, uh, zoom in and then pan around and all of the kind of labels uh, and, and uh, ticks basically move around too. So it's fast enough for your interactive use. So it's not, there's no uh, really um, essentially high, uh, it, it doesn't really take that long to compute. So interactive uh, capabilities still are there. Um, and. Uh, we haven't, we haven't actually really aggressively optimized it, so if the, it turns out that there are some performance uh, hits, then we can actually go and, and try to optimize things. For now, we were concerned with just actually getting the functionality working. Okay, so uh, I've talked about images on the sky. Um, basically, it's not the only thing we can plot. So this is now an example of uh, what we call a spectral cube. So it's basically an image on the sky, but as a function of uh, wavelength or frequency, which you can convert to a Doppler shift. Okay, so it's as a function of velocity now. If I go through this cube, okay, this is a, a star-forming cloud, uh, so basically it's just a giant cloud of, of gas and dust, and it's moving in, random, in you know, various directions, there's some turbulence in the cloud, uh, and you basically, that's what you're seeing as you're slicing through the different velocities, uh, you see basically the, different, uh, the, the material in the cloud at different velocities. Okay, so this is still a, a plot on the sky. Uh, there's nothing new. It's just a series of plots that are made into a movie. But what you can do is you can take cubes like this and you can slice them along a direction. So you can say, what, we, what I want to do is to slice, uh, to make a slice basically in the uh, vertical direction here like this. So I'll just show over here. I'll try it's a bit harder. All right, um, so, and then basically to take that slice and to make a plot of position versus velocity. Uh, so this is what this plot is. So this is now declination on the y-axis, which is like latitude, uh, and then velocity on the x-axis. And you know, where it's brighter, there's more emission at that velocity. So the way we deal with this in WCS axis is uh, we basically have an additional slices argument for the WCS axis class. And that takes basically uh, as many items as there are coordinates, and it specifies which ones should go on the x uh, axis of the image. That's the only point at which we talk about x axis, the kind of, you know, because we're showing rectangular images. Um, and then which one goes on the y-axis. And then for all the other uh, coordinates, we basically slice them at a certain index. And so this means that you can actually take a five-dimensional cube which has uh, various uh, positional information and go and slice it in some way, and then you'll still end up with the correct uh, coordinate system. Okay. So uh, I should mention that we basically have uh, you know, all of the methods from matplotlib are by default because we're inheriting from the axis class. Um, and so basically the, the, the key is that if you use them by default, it will show things in pixel coordinates. And data coordinates, basically. If you want to show things in uh, world coordinates, we've actually provided a convenience to do that. Now, the matplotlib, all of the matplotlib root, uh, methods and uh, classes, or many of them, have this transform uh, attribute, which uh, you can pass some kind of arbitrary transformation, uh, and it will then allow you to plot something in a different coordinate system. 
And the, uh, the idea is that rather than having you know, people re-implement their own conversion from you know, world to pixel coordinate in our case, or you know, between coordinate systems, we provide this uh, convenience uh, method called getTransform, which you can use uh, to basically get a transformation, a predefined transformation. So this is an example here uh, of basically how you have, uh, you know, you try to plot a rectangular patch. So if you just uh, essentially create the rectangular patch uh, and you just put values in there, no transformation, and you add the patch to the image, it will just create this little one down here, which is aligned with the pixel coordinates. Uh, you can also do get, get transform, for example, FK5. That will get, you don't need to know what FK5 is beyond the fact it's one of the equatorial systems. So it's, rota it's actually the one that's used for the ticks and labels. It's rotated compared to the image. And so if you now basically plot your rectangle in world coordinates uh, and then specify the transformation, it shows this rectangle up here. So you can then give the rectangle in world coordinates. And this last one is just to show that if you specify in galactic coordinates, you end up with this rectangle. It turns out in this case that galactic coordinates are actually aligned with the pixel coordinates. Okay. Okay, so uh, for all this, we have these Matplotlib transformation objects internally, which go from pixel to uh, equatorial coordinates, and then from equatorial coordinates to galactic coordinates. Uh, and we actually don't have to deal with all the chaining or the transformation. Matplotlib does that already for us. Okay. Uh, this is just another brief example showing that you can also uh, overlay other images as contours which are in a different pixel grid. So for what you would do for this is for get transform, you pass a WCS object and it knows to basically then make a transformation that goes from the pixel coordinates of the original image to equatorial coordinates to galactic coordinates and back to the other pixel coordinate system. And it allows you to pl overplot contours in a system that's different uh, from the one uh, for the image. Okay, now... Um, Okay, this is just one last example that you can basically show uh, multiple coordinate systems at the same time. So that's actually one of the reasons why we developed this package is to also be able to uh, show m multiple coordinate systems. So you can have multiple ticks, multiple coordinates on each axis, and then uh, overlay coordinate systems on top of that. Okay, so this just shows two different coordinate systems. One of the last things I want to talk about in terms of functionality is uh, this was actually just implemented last week, so it's still you know you may still find some bugs in it, but it, it works reasonably okay so far, um, is the idea of custom frames. Now, there's no reason we should restrict ourselves to rectangular frames. And when we say things like L, R, B, T, those are the different spines of the rectangular frame. But you can also set up a hexagonal frame like this uh, with you know, different letters that refer to the different sides. I'm not going to go over all this, but the point is it's just essentially that's the, the only code that you need to define a custom frame uh, for a hexagon. And then once you do this, you can pass the, the frame to the WCS axis class, uh, and then uh, it will basically automatically show uh, the image with that frame. Okay? And when you want to show labels on a certain axis, instead of saying you want it on L or R, you say A, B, C. Yeah. Okay, so um, the, the only thing right now that's a bit manual is you have to clip the image manually down here, but that's also something that we can integrate in the future. Now, what this means is that we can do very important things, like we can make a plot which uses the Python logo as the frame of the plot. <laughs> okay? So this goes to the, S the uh, Python logo, gets the SVG path, and then actually just makes the frame with that. Uh, it actually it doesn't quite work interactively yet, so it's actually, it was really good for debugging purposes. Uh, there's something not quite right, but it's, it's possible to make static images like this at the moment. Now, you might want to do this because, uh, as I showed in the SKCD plot originally, you have uh, different, um, different projections might have different frames that you might want to do, uh, and so you could do this uh, this way. Okay, just since I promised that this will work on geospatial data, I took some, uh, essentially, uh, a map of the ice coverage in the Arctic, uh, and just coded up the transformation for this, and then passed it to the WCS axis, and sure enough, it works, and plots all the coordinate grid lines uh, and labels. And, of course, here's the XKCD version, just to, just to prove that we haven't broken anything in that respect. <laughs> Okay, so uh, th this is now just, I've also been collaborating with people on the SunPy project uh, to get it to work with solar data, which d uses some slight different conventions to astronomy data. Um, and uh, so in this case, we have the coordinate system. Uh, this is actually just the offset from the center of the sun, and then the grid actually shows a different coordinate system, which is the native longitude latitude system on the surface of the sun. And when you zoom in, uh, the labels, you start to see all the labels where the grid lines intersect. Okay, so uh, just to summarize, WCS Access provides a way to plot image data and seamlessly uh, overlay arbitrary world coordinate systems. And it can be used with any data that has world to pixel mapping or pixel to world, uh, and uh, it can be either using the AstroPy WCS object for transforming uh, or actually just generic map plot transformations. 
Now, I'd be very interested, this is still a very experimental package, and I'd be very interested in working with people in, uh, who are interested in using this to plot their own data. Uh, and so, for example, I'd be happy to sprint on it uh, with you if you're interested. Uh, and so all the code and documentation are already available here. Thank you.